Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm still alive. And in today's video, I have another Halloween Dollar Tree DIY. And today's video is also in collaboration with Courtney from This Golden Home. She is doing some Dollar Tree DIYs as well. So I will pin a link to her channel down in the comments. If it's not there, you can find it in the description. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the DIYs. Okay, so the first DIY that we're going to be making is a haunted house light up picture frame. I'm taking one of these Dollar Tree picture frames and removing everything except for the cardboard matting around the front. And then I'm going to be taping this haunted house picture that I printed off. I will link the image down below if you would like this image. However, you can choose your own. And then I'm taping it to the mat and then I'm placing it back inside the picture frame and then I'm taking these little cardboard pieces, putting those back in there and then putting the little metal prongs back down. Now we're going to be taking a second Dollar Tree frame, removing everything and just using the actual frame. And then we're going to be putting some E6000 glue. A little goes a long way, but for some reason I was so tired and I used way too much so it did ooze out the sides. So definitely don't do what I did. <laughs> a little goes a long way with this stuff. And then we're going to be taking some wire LED lights from Dollar Tree and we're just going to be taping these around the cardboard part of the picture frame. Once we have our lights all taped up, we are going to take the battery pack and trace the battery pack around the backing of the picture frame. And then we're going to be taking an X-Acto knife and cutting that part out. And then we're going to be taking these cardboard pieces out of the second picture frame and then putting those on top of the lights. This is just giving it a little bit of cushion so everything isn't right up against the glass. And then after we do this, we're going to take the battery pack and then insert it through the hole that we made. And then after that is done, we're going to put the battery pack into the little hole and then close down the prongs on the picture frame. And this is how it turned out. Okay, for this next DIY, we're going to be painting some ghosties, and I just sketched out my ghosts. I can't really give you a tutorial on how to paint ghosts. I kind of just winged it myself. Uh, I'm not an artist. I'm not a painter. I just, I just drew it, and then I painted it. So, I can't really give you a tutorial on that. But you can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be ghosts. And then I took a couple of these wooden pieces from the Dollar Tree and I painted them black. And then I took one of these sawtooth hangers and attached it to one of the wooden blocks that I have. After that, I took some E6000 glue and I applied a very generous amount. Once again, you do not need that much glue. I don't know why I used that much. You don't need that much. Anyways, I attached it to the back of the painting and then I took some of these string lights from the Dollar Tree and I wanted a cool light and they don't have them right now at my store. I know that they sell them for Christmas, but right now they currently only have Halloween wire lights and they come in orange and purple. So I found these spider lights and I removed the little spiders off of them. They came off pretty easily. And then I took some Velcro, attached it to the battery pack and then attached the battery pack to the back of the painting. After I have the battery pack attached to the back of the painting, I took some hot glue and I hot glued where the lights are and just attached it to the photo frame to make it look like the ghosts were holding on to the string lights. And this is how it turned out. All right, for this next DIY, we're going to be making a mummy skull, and this was actually inspired by a piece that Michaels has this year. 
Uh, however, theirs doesn't light up. This one does. The first thing I'm doing is cutting out its eyes, its nose, this little crack in its head. I also cut out its missing teeth and the spaces in between each tooth. And then I took my tea light and I did the same thing on the bottom because this is how we're going to make it light up. You want to make it so it fits in there perfectly, like so. Next, we're going to be taking some matte Mod Podge. I did purchase this from Walmart. However, Dollar Tree does sell it, but you would need a couple of bottles. So I would suggest purchasing it from Walmart because it will save you some money. And then we're going to be taking some gauze. Again, you can purchase this at Dollar Tree or at Walmart. And I did pre-cut it. And then I drenched it in the Mod Podge. And then I cleaned off the excess. And then I draped it on top of the skull head. And then I kind of just like pinched it in places to make it seem like scrunched up fabric. And I did do two layers of this. So I let it dry. And then I came back and did a second layer. After the skull was completely dry, I took some beige paint and painted the entire skull. After the entire skull was painted with the beige paint, I took some black and orange paint, mixed it together, and then I took some water, dipped it in the black and orange mixture, and then painted it on to the mummy. And this is how it turned out. I do really quickly wanna mention that the lights aren't as yellow in person as they are in camera. They're more of like a golden glow in person. So just keep that in mind. For the last DIY, we're going to be taking one of these plastic hands from the Dollar Tree. Now the plastic used for these hands are a lot thicker than previous years. And this DIY was actually inspired by another channel. I do believe it was called the DIY Couple. So I did kind of borrow their idea uh, but made it my own. So I will link them because I want to give credit where credit is due. Anyways, like I said, this plastic is thicker and in their video, they were able to just use scissors. Um, I do believe their video is like three or four years old at this point. So just keep that in mind if you do go and watch the video that I link. All right, I'm falling behind, but I took the battery pack from some wired string lights that I purchased from the Dollar Tree and I traced the battery pack on the back of the hand then I took my X-Acto knife and I cut it out very carefully. Be so careful. The plastic is so thick, I don't want anyone to cut themselves. I actually did end up cutting myself uh, because I attempted to make this previously and it didn't work out. Anyways, then we're going to be poking a little hole in the bottom of our crystal ball and then also on the top of our hand so that way we can weave some string lights through. And then we're going to be taking apart the hand. This is the only way that I could figure out how to do this. And then I took some gardening shears and I cut off the fingers at the joint. As you're cutting these, make sure you keep all of the pieces for the fingers together. I actually grabbed the wrong finger at one point in this video and I glued it to the wrong spot. So just definitely be careful and pay attention to where you're putting everything and where you're grabbing things from. Anyways, they do have these little clips on some of the joints. I don't know what to call them. Um, some of them do not. This one does not, so it didn't really clip in, but it's fine. Anyways, after we got all of the pieces cut off, then we're going to be gluing them back onto the hand. I did actually have to take an X-Acto knife for the thumb. Um, in the guy's video that I'm going to link, he cut off the thumb and turned it outwards, and I wanted to do the same thing so that way it looks like an actual hand. I don't know why Dollar Tree made the hands like this. I don't know if it's just cheaper that way. Beats the heck out of me, but I wanted to make it more realistic looking. Anyways, after we got all the pieces cut out, we're going to be taking the hand and clipping it back together. It should easily snap back into place. And then we're going to be gluing the fingers back on. Here I'm taking the thumb and I'm going to be gluing it on at an angle just so it's sticking out of the side like an actual thumb would be. And then I'm basically just going to be doing the same thing on each finger, flanger. <laughs> and again, we're just gonna kind of angle it. You can do whatever 
you want to do, however you want to glue it on. This is just how I did it. And then once we have all of the fingers glued back on, we're going to be taking some Dollar Tree fake nails and then we're going to glue them on with some E6000 glue. Here is where I grabbed the wrong piece. That's why I said be careful where, where you grab your stuff from. Now, because I didn't really like these giant gaping gaps in the back of the hand, I did take some hot glue and I filled them in. I filled in a little bit, I let it dry, and then I filled it in some more, just so there wasn't these giant holes in the fingers. After I had the knuckles all filled in, I took some of this Waverly chalk paint in the color Steel, and I did, I think, two or three coats of this paint. After I had the hand all painted, I actually ended up using some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the fingernails. I painted the fronts and the backs of the fingernails and I did two coats of paint each. Next, I'm going to be taking one of these glow-in-the-dark skeletons and popping his head off, and then I'm cutting the top of the little plastic piece off, and then I'm taking my X-Acto knife and cutting a larger hole into the skull because it doesn't exactly line up with the hole that I created in the crystal ball. I did originally try gluing this down, and it didn't fit, so I did have to take my X-Acto knife and cut off a little bit of his chin to make it fit inside the crystal ball. Next, we're going to be taking our wire string lights and weaving it into the hole that we made into the hand previously, and then we're going to do the same thing with the crystal ball. We're also going to be putting the battery pack into the back of the hand. You can secure this even more with some hot glue if you want. Just make sure the screw is on the outside so that way if you need to change the batteries at a later date, you can. Once you get the lights all the way inside the crystal ball, then you're gonna go ahead and take some hot glue and glue it down to the hand. And then because I wanted to make this into a wall sconce, I attached another one of these sawtooth hangers to the back of this wooden plank that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. I painted it black and then I took some hot glue and applied a very, very, very generous amount to the hand and then I stuck it to the wooden plank and then once this dried, I actually added some more hot glue just to really secure it into place. And then once that dried, I took some black paint and I painted the hot glue just to kind of hide my mess a little bit, even though it's not really necessary because we are now going to be taking some creepy cloth and just draping it over the hand. I did not cut this creepy cloth at all. I used the whole sheet and I just kind of wrapped it how I thought it would look cool. And. This is probably my favorite DIY that I have ever made. I really love how this turned out. Now I did have the idea to paint the knuckles and give them a little bit of depth, but because I needed to get this video up, I did not do that. However, I do think it would look really cool if the knuckles were painted. Anyways, this is how it turned out. Anyways, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys all next time. Bye!